morning. My name is Diggin Tarp. back of your hymnal, number 580, in the back of your hymnal. So if you want to take your hymnal out from the, the pews of your church in front of you, I'll be reading from uh, number 580, baptism. All right. And if my wife will start reading. And Jesus came and spoke unto him, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things. Whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Know ye not that any man, many of us, here baptized to Jesus Christ were baptized were baptized unto his death therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection know this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be de destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more death, hath no more dominion over him. For in him that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, Reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Let's go to the throne in prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for blessing each home that is represented here this morning, all for the purpose of glorifying your name. Holy Father, we thank you for blessing a saint that is coming forth to be baptized in your name, Holy Father. We thank you, Father, for our leader, 
of this church, Reverend Owens, Dr. Owens, Father, and to bring forth many others, Father, for the message that you give to him, Father, to bring forth and to give recognition to your name. We need so many leaders like our pastor, Father, because it seems, Father, that we are losing uh, the meaning of life. We ask you, Father, to continue to bless him as he sends forth his vision for this church and praising you and worshiping you in truth and in spirit. We need this kind of leadership throughout the world, almighty God. It seems that we are losing, we have lost our way. It seems, Father, that we, the leadership that's needed throughout the world, Father, that we just are in a state, Father, where lies rule rather than your word ruling. Have mercy on all our souls. We pray, Father. In the name of your Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. God, we thank you for adding to this body of believers yet another soul, Lord God, committed to you, committed to follow you, committed to love you, and to go all the way. We pray, Lord God, that you shine your light on his pathway. Pray that you would bless him that his fruits, his gifts, Lord God, will become manifest as he yields himself to learn and to grow. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that all of us will remember the landmark where first we met the Lord and continue to go on in Jesus' name to the glory of God. Let it be so, according to your word and your will. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus in the midst of your people and all the people saying, Amen. Amen.
problem, whatever the problem, whatever the problem. I know that he can solve it. I put it all in his hands. This and that. This and that. Whatever the problem, yeah. it can be this yeah. or it can be that. Yeah. I know that yeah. he can solve them. Yeah. You just got to wait on the Lord. Yeah. Amen. He may not come today, yeah. may not come tomorrow. Yeah. You may not see him anywhere yeah. in the future, but he can handle this yeah. and he can handle that. Yeah. If y'all know what I'm talking about, anybody know what I'm talking about, go ahead and stand till you're free. Yeah. And give God some this and that praise. This and that. This and that. Good morning, New Hope family and friends, and thank you for joining us here 
where everybody is somebody and the Spirit of the Lord is at work. Our door is open at 8 a.m. and the worship service begins at 9.30 a.m. We are located at 1575 West 17th Street in San Bernardino, California. Our services are live streamed and available for viewing on our church website and social media platforms, YouTube and Facebook. This is Carolyn Jordan Daniels, and these are your announcements for the week of April 7, 2024. Deacons available to assist you this week are Deacon William Carper and Deacon Wade Young. New member orientation will be held each Sunday in the conference room from 8.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. This four-week course offers a foundation for new members and a refresher on issues related to the Christian faith and doctrine for the growing and maturing disciple. Classes are ongoing and open to all members. This is what it takes to take on Alzheimer's. Awareness of the fact that nearly two-thirds of people diagnosed are women. Courage to accept that memory loss that disrupts daily life could be a sign of Alzheimer's. Dedication to lowering your risk by staying active and monitoring blood pressure. And support from family and friends to talk about signs, screening, and early detection. Take on Alzheimer's. Learn more about signs and screening at TakeOnALZ.com. Brought to you by the California Department of Public Health. Listen up, New Hope. Our Spring Revival begins on Tuesday, April 16th through Thursday, April 18th. The expositor for the week is Dr. Andrea King, and our revival preacher is Dr. Frederick L. Fairley, Sr. Please review the church bulletin or our website for detailed information. Please plan to join us for a spirit-filled week. A great big thank you to all the DIY Easter Baskets contributors which are Dr. Michael Andrew Owens, Mother Joyce McIver, our Minister of Music, Brother Michael Jackson, New Hope's Office Assistant, Sister Laverna Hammond, and our Choir Director, Sister Rhonda McIver Jackson. An evangelism ministry meeting has been scheduled for Thursday, April 11th from noon until 1.30 p.m. at the Golden Corral Restaurant, located at 325 East Hospitality Lane in San Bernardino. For additional information, please contact Minister DeCorey Newsom at 951-707-7675. Mama, loving you is like food to my soul. You are cordially invited to the annual Mother's Day luncheon on Saturday, May 4th at 11 a.m. Seating is limited, so sign-ups begin next Sunday following our morning worship service in the Fellowship Hall and the Mary Magdalene Mission Circle are the hosts. Congratulations to Solomon Moore, who is the 2024 Botillion Sir Knight, and to Daniel Rivera Jr., who is the first runner-up. Solomon's parents are Brother David and Sister Melody Moore, and his grandparents are Deacon David and Deaconess Eunice Moore. Daniel's mother is Sister Arnisa Burns Rivera, and his grandmother is the illustrious Reverend LaRonda Cook. And more good news, Jomani Chess and his group Soul Point are being inducted into the California Music Hall of Fame on Sunday, April 14th. For ticket information, please contact Jumani. As we all know, his mother is the inspirational Reverend Veronica Martindale. New Hope, stand to your feet and congratulate our extraordinary gifts from God. Be a good steward of God's blessings and remember to give your tithes and offerings in one of several ways. Online, give on our website or mobile app, utilize PushPay, you can text to give, mail your church contributions, or come to the church office during office hours Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Tithes and offerings will also be received at the conclusion of our in-person worship service today. New Hope, please be in prayer for those on the sick and shut-in list, the prayer list, and our bereaved families. In addition, please send a card and or make a telephone call to let them know how much we care. Just to name a few, Sister Denise Goins, Sister Mary Johnson, Sister Linda Martin, and Brother Reginald Williams. Our sympathy and Christian concern are extended to the following families. To Brother Larry Lanehart and family in the loss of his mother, Sister Lucy Lanehart. The homegoing service will occur on April 12th at 11 a.m. at New Hope Missionary Baptist Church. The interment will take place at 2 p.m. at Green Acres Memorial Park in Bloomington, California. To Sister Mary Potts, Reverend Jose and Sister Trivia Massengill, Sister Alexis Holt and family in the loss of their husband, father, and grandfather, Brother Clarence Potts. Homegoing services are pending. Your thought for the week is, when the enemy starts knocking on a door you closed long ago, you just say, Jesus, it's for you.
May God bless your week with answered prayers and open doors. Good morning, New Hope family and friends, and thank you for joining us here where every... And so April technically starts the beginning of the second quarter of 2024. And as I woke up this morning, I woke up grateful and thankful yes, because I know that God is going to work out every quarter of this year yeah. according to his will yeah. and his purpose. Yeah. And I know that you all believe that as well. Jeremiah 29 and 11 states, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Yeah. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. There's a simple praise that speaks about the acceptance and acknowledgement that we need God in every facet of our lives. And it says, without God, yeah. I could do nothing. Without him, yeah. I would fail. by the worship experience that you experience today. You are the most important people in this congregation. And we want you to know that we are so glad that you are here. If you are worshiping with us in person, please stand and remain standing so that we may acknowledge you. Visitors, please stand. Amen. 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 We thank God for you and we welcome you. To each of our visitors, keep standing, keep standing. To each of our visitors, if you need a church home, please consider New Hope. During the invitation to discipleship, you will have the opportunity to respond by coming forward to receive Jesus Christ and become a part of this historic church that is still learning, growing, and committed to serving the Lord. If you are worshiping with us online, we are located at 1575 West 17th Street in San Bernardino. Please visit us on our website for vital information about how to connect with us for ongoing ministry opportunities. New Hope, this is our two-minute fellowship. Let's all stand and greet one another as we worship the Lord. Amen.
Jordan, and we're here to present the uh, Bible to our newly baptized member. Yeah. With the support of uh, Deacon Hogan, he's getting involved in the men's ministry, and support of his wife, who's been a member here in a while. He's been coming here for a few years. So uh, a couple of Sundays, he says, uh, Deacon Jordan, I want to join the church. We went through the process. So I want to 
present the Bible to uh, Brother uh, Ricky Richardson. And uh, so welcome to the New Hope Church and to the Jordan Family Ministry. Amen, New Hope. Amen. Thank God for adding yet another soul to the body. We're going to ask that Brother Richardson would remain close as we prepare to come to the altar. Asking your prayers for the family of Brother Clarence Potts, who went on home to glory, extended illness, but long time of being loved and cared for by a faithful spouse, Sister Mary Potts. We remember him as a stalwart Christian gentleman. We thank God for his spirit and for his days of strength when he added uh, great repute to the New Hope Church family. We look forward to praying the family through and being to their side as they make this walk. Let us continue in prayer for those who we know are sick or bereaved. Somebody knew you were coming to the house today and they said, pray for me. Amen, amen and amen. We're getting ready for a great revival. Pray that the spirit of the Lord will indeed be revealed in this house as his glory comes shining through in our worship, in our fellowship, in our study, in our service. I don't know about you, but I just want to be more and more like Jesus. It takes more and more of his Holy Spirit to be like him. And so if we receive his spirit, we can be like him and show love one to the other as he has given us that example. Praise God for you today. Isn't it just good to be in the house? Isn't it good to have another day's journey? Amen. And we lift our Savior up. Let's lift our Savior up. God bless. I'm going to ask our guest minister if he, or he would join us at the altar and then on the rostrum. Amen. I, I knew when I, they, they, they introduced me to him before he told me his name. I said, uh-huh. You at least a deacon. <laughs> Turns out he's a minister of the gospel as well. So yeah, something that is something churning and burning in him. We welcome him today. God bless. God bless. Let us gather at the altar as we look to the Lord in prayer doeth all things well. And we've reserved this spot uh, for the mother's board to give us someone from the mother's board to pray for us. I don't know about you, but every now and then I need a mother's prayer. And since my birth mother has gone on to glory, I know I can rely on these sainted souls to get a word through on our behalf. God bless. Mother Mamie Jenkins will lead us in this prayer. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. We are come in the name of Jesus, praising, honoring, and giving you thanks for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for grace and mercy we ask, O oh merciful God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. We are praying for all of those that we are duty bound to pray for. The sick, we are asking for healing. The hungry, the unsheltered, we are asking for covering. 
the bereaved, we are asking for strength. And oh, merciful God, we ask mercy and grace upon each and every one of us. We are asking a special blessing upon our pastor, the shepherd that you sent to guide, rule, and direct this flock. We ask grace and mercy and that you would be with him and take care of him. Lord, I ask that you would look at the sick list. It's long and it's growing. We ask that you touch each and every one on that list. You know the reason they are there, and only you can heal their hearts. We ask, O oh merciful God, that we can't close this prayer without asking your divine guidance on my own biological family. We pray that you would look into our home and Take care of whatever the cause is needed. We could be here all day, dear Jesus, asking for things and blessings, but we mustn't close this prayer because we know the hour is short. So in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we say amen.
take this cup in remembering the blood that was shed for us. Lord Jesus, and every time we do, we come together and remember lest we forget Calvary lest we forget the blood that was shed for you and me lest we forget the great gift of his love for us all he said do this in remembrance he doesn't want us to forget the victory that is ours for him having overcome sin, death, hell, and the grave. He wants us to remember that he took on everything the world threw at him and yet remained faithful to the mission, faithful to the assignment to be the savior for the world. He did not turn back. He did not come down from the cross. He got up from the grave the victor over it all with all power in his hands and that means there isn't anything we can face in life not sickness not pestilence no enemy nothing can separate us Woo! <laughs> from the love of God in Christ Jesus and don't you forget it <laughs> let us stand as we share in the church covenant that reminds us of the attitude and the conduct, the character, the behavior of one who has decided to make Jesus their choice and to follow him, not only in word, but in deed, in attitude, and in action. Let us again recommit to the Lord our mind, our hearts, our very souls. The Church Covenant in today's language. I will be reading the red and I ask of you to please follow along to, in the black, and we'll come together at the end. What common experience leads us into a spiritual fellowship and covenant relationship with God and with one another? By what pledge do we return from the ways of the world?
What vows do we gladly make as stewards of that which God has entrusted in us? For the sake of our home and loved ones, what task do we humbly assume? Since we are one in Christ Jesus, by what ministries are we to strengthen each other and fulfill the teaching of our Lord and Savior? For the good of our own spiritual development and for the best interest of our master's kingdom, what do we promise to do if we move beyond the reach of this church? All together, please. We report to propose that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite in some other church of like faith in order to carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principle. Amen and thank you. Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper according to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verses 14 through 21 in the New King James Version. When the hour had come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. Then he said to them with fervent desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it, gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new, tet the new covenant in, in my blood which I shed for you. But behold, the hand of my betrayer is with me on the table. Ask Deacon Sharp to lead us in this prayer of confession. The Lord said if we confess our sins, he will be faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Only he can do it. Let us receive it so that we might have our part <laughs> with him. Hallelujah. Eternal God, our Father, we come before you this morning in the mighty and matchless name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. This morning, Father God, we're here in remembrance of what this communion is all about. Well. You said as often as we do it, do it in remembrance of you. So that's what we're here for this morning, Father God. The bread that is in remembrance of your body, the fruit of the vine, which is the blood that was shed for our sins, 
We're doing it, Father God, knowing that the blood was shed to wipe away the sins, Father. The body went through cruel and unusual punishment so we wouldn't have to, Father. The price you paid for each and every one of us, Father, we stand here this morning saying thank you for it all. Knowing, Father God, that the price was paid and we're just the benefactors of what it was that you went through. We thank you, we love you, and we praise you. We know, Father God, we've fallen short, but the price that you paid, knowing that the price of sinners, and we all are sinners, we've fallen short of your glory each and every day. But like I said, the price was paid for us by you. We've become weak and weary, but because of your goodness and your mercy, you lift us up so that we can walk proudly day by day throughout the day so others can look upon us, Father, and know that we are your children and we are blessed and honored to be your children. We thank you for all that you've done for us and all that you will be doing. And once again, Father, I say thank you and I lift up your precious and holy name. For it is in the mighty name of Jesus we all pray. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. As this table is further prepared, we invite those of you who are sharing with us remotely online to gather to yourselves wherever you are, those elements that would be signs of his body and the blood of Christ, fruit juice, bread, crackers, common elements to be consecrated for this great use today as signs of our faith that we're believers in Jesus Christ. Those of you in the sanctuary, if there are any who have not received your elements, please raise your hand so that the deacons may be able to serve you. In that upper room, Jesus took bread and likened it to his own body that would be bruised and tortured on Calvary, took the wine and before he poured it, before he served it, he gave thanks, he gave thanks that he should be the one to take our place, to stand in the gap, to be the one who took upon himself the chastisement of the world. We thank him because he was the only worthy sacrifice. We thank him because he left no unfinished business with our soul salvation. We thank him because what he took upon himself, he was able to carry. He was able to cleanse. And so blessed be the name of the Lord and blessed be the children of our God who by his stripes are healed. Let us give thanks. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We love and adore you, Lord God, for there is none other like you. There's none other, Lord God, who is worthy to be sacrificed, worthy to be offered up for the sins of the world. And we thank you for taking our place and taking upon yourself the chastisement that belong unto us. Now, Lord God, let us rest and bask in the peace that comes 
from knowing that we are saved, sanctified, delivered, freed from sin and condemnation. Oh Lord God, keep us together as the people called by your name to walk in your way, to follow the light that you shine on our pathway. Make us over and over again till you have the vision for which you purposed our coming. And let us, Lord God, live a life that's pleasing in your sight as you, Lord God, have made the way for us to the Father. Consecrate these common elements for the Master's use and these vessels of clay to be used for your glory. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. He took the bread and likened it to his body that would be broken, bruised on Calvary. Let us take and eat together. This is my body which is broken for you. Thank you, Lord, for the word made flesh. Hallelujah. To dwell among us and show us the love of God. As you have shown us how, let us indeed, Lord, love one another. Hallelujah and amen. This is my blood poured out for your redemption. Let us drink together. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, bless, 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 Lord God, deep down in our souls. Let the refreshing of the Holy Ghost, Lord God, be as a fountain in us to drink, as bread that we might feast and be filled and be fed over and over again. Oh, Lord God, your body, your blood, let us receive these gifts with thanksgiving and let our living show forth your handiwork. For we are created in Christ Jesus unto good works, and you have given us your example. Let it be so according to your word and your will. In Jesus' name, hallelujah and amen. Uh 
as I look back over my life. Oh, I can see how your love has guided me. Even though I've done wrong, you never left me alone. But you forgave me, and you kept on blessing. And, and you kept on blessing. This I recall to my mind. Therefore I have hope. It's because of your mercy that we are not consumed. Because thy compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. As I look back over my life, oh, yes. I can see how your love has guided me. Even though I've done wrong, you never left me alone. But you forgave me, and you kept on blessing. And you kept on this blessing. I this I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. It's because it's because of your mercy that we are not consumed. Because because. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. As I look back over my life, come on, clap your hands, through hope. I can see. Can you see how his love has got to you? I don't know about you. I've been some places. Even though I've done wrong, you never left me alone. But you forgave me and you kept on blessing. And you kept on blessing. This I recall to my mind. Therefore I have hope. It's because of your mercy that we are not consumed. Because my compassions fail not, they are new every morning. What is it? Great is our faithfulness. Great is our faithfulness. You've been so faithful. Oh, know that you. How many know he's been faithful? No. Just wave your hand. You've been so faithful. I know Ricky you know he's been faithful. Come on now. I can never. I can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me. How you loose my shackles and you set me free. How you made a way out of no way. Turn my darkness into day. You pin my joy in the time of sorrow. Hope for my tomorrow. Peace in the time of storm. Strength when I weaken all. I can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me. How you loose my shackles and you set me free. How you made a way out of no way Turn my darkness into hey, hey, Giving my joy in the time for sorrow Hope for my tomorrow Peace in my time of storm Strength when I weaken
sunshine of his grace reminds me whose I am and that I've only come this far by faith in him. Thank God for his faithfulness. Notice they only had three, they only had three mics. That's why I couldn't get a little piece of that, but you know. <laughs> you, 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 you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get my own mic. <laughs> then I'm going to sing whenever I get good and ready. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right, all right. Praise God, praise God to the gospel according to Luke, Luke chapter 6, verses 6 to 11 in the New King James Version. Luke chapter 6, verses 6 to 11. Now it happened on another Sabbath also that he entered the synagogue and taught. And a man was there whose right hand was withered. So the scribes and Pharisees watched him closely, whether he would heal on the Sabbath, that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts and said to the man who had the withered hand, Arise and stand here. And he arose and stood. Then Jesus said to them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy? And when he had looked around at them all, 
he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he did so. And his hand was restored as whole as the other. But they were filled with rage and discussed with one another what they might do to Jesus. Lord God, help us to hear your word afresh. Use this vessel for the proclamation of your word to be a blessing to your people. May hearts be made glad and apply the same to right living of our days. In Jesus' name, amen. He said to the man, stretch out your hand. I want to use for a theme, stretch out. Stretch out. If this story appeared in the newspaper or was reported on television by eyewitness or action news, it would probably be called a human interest story, something the ordinary person could relate to, something generally thought to be heartwarming and uplifting. While such a story would be an exception to today's headlines of murder, school shootings, and political corruption, while such a story would be an outlier these days, it was much more so the rule for Jesus to be involved in the stories of ordinary people. The gospel writers do not report that with great regularity, Jesus went to the synagogue and the temple to perform great wonders. He is there on the occasion of this text, but know this, that even while Jesus is in the synagogue, he acts like he's still on the street, interrupting his Bible lesson to deal with a parishioner who has a problem. Jesus is always interested in our problems, our life's circumstances, and our conditions. You may not always be able to tell what Jesus is interested in by what his church is interested in, because you can generate a whole lot more excitement in the church about things that matter least than you can about things that matter most. What matters most is people coming to a saving knowledge of God that makes us love one another, that makes us care and share with one another as we would with family and friends and treating one another as we would want to be treated. That's what this community this fellowship of believers is supposed to be about. We have to learn to get excited in the church about what we can do to bring people to Christ for a life-changing experience. Jesus ran into folk in the synagogue who had a greater interest in their own reputation, their position, their fees, their laws, their ceremonies, their garments, and their seats. That's what occupied their attention. And in the midst was a man with a withered hand, challenging them to be more interested in whole people. A human interest. An ordinary person was in their midst and for Jesus, the man was a priority. To the scribes and Pharisees, he was an imposition. We don't do healings on the Sabbath. It's too much like work. And we are commanded not to work on the Sabbath. My friends, sometimes we deal with God's priorities as if it's too much like work to be about our father's business. Too much like work to get up and get out to church and give God praise. 
So I can't go every Sunday just when I feel like it. Too much like work to be a witness and tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Too busy minding my own business is too much like work to be about my father's business. Too much like work to study, to show ourselves approved, to equip ourselves to do the work of God according to his manual. To do God's work, God's way, is too often regarded as too much like work. I don't know what scripture lesson Jesus opened to that day, but when he saw the man with the shriveled up hand and knew the hardness of heart of those who should have been more willing to help, Jesus included in his lesson plan some practical application that would demonstrate God's message. Now I know that the real tension in this text is between Jesus and the Pharisees and scribes. But I am drawn to that man with the withered hand and his response to Jesus ministering to him. I know we like a great debate, and some of us love to argue. The debate here is about the laws concerning the Sabbath. And ordinarily, the theologian and the academician in me would not resist getting into the thick of that debate. But today, I'm not in need of exercising my intellectual muscles. I need to be made whole. And my interest is in what this man's condition has to say to me about being made whole. Whole. Hopefully you didn't come to church this morning for arguments. Hopefully you didn't come this morning just to swap at gnats and consume yourself with things that do not matter. Hopefully you came because you need a remedy for a plaguing condition. Hopefully you came because you want to know how to make your life Complete how to go forward with the changes you know you need to make in order to get your life straightened out. Right. How to get up from places in life's journey where you have fallen and start high stepping in a new direction. Right. Hopefully, you got up with your mind stayed on Jesus. And knowing that God inhabits the praises of his people, knowing he shows up at the church house when the faithful call on him in prayer, knowing he stops by with Holy Ghost power, hopefully you came to see if today you could get Jesus to respond to your need. I don't know about you. But I wouldn't mind being an object lesson for Jesus. I don't mind being a case study for how much Jesus cares for persons with withered hands. Oh, you may be the picture of good health, but do you have peace of mind? You seem to be doing well and everything may appear to be just fine, but if you told the truth, would you tell us that your heart is hurting and your soul is restless? Are you having worrisome days and sleepless nights because of things you haven't been able to do anything about? Some folks don't like to be singled out. <coughs> don't want anybody to know that they're going through something. But you keep playing that game and you are going to end up spazzing out somewhere with nobody coming to your rescue because you played that game too well. I don't mind, I tell you, Jesus singling me out. I don't mind him making me an example 
of what it means to be made whole. I know he hears my cries. I need thee every hour. Precious Lord, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. I want to be an illustration that Jesus can use to teach somebody about the love of God for ordinary people. Oh, I believe that what he'll do for me, he can do for you. If you call him with faith believing, if you respond to his instructions, if you accept his prescriptions, you might have to stretch a little bit. But what you need from God is well within reach. Real people, help me Holy Ghost, and real problems always challenge the church to show the healing, saving love of God. More often than not, we sing our songs, we pray our prayers, we teach and preach our sermons, and we go through our little rituals and then go home without anything really causing us to change or to be made better or to behave any better or to have a better attitude. But every now and then, somebody will come into our midst whose very presence will ask us to live up to what we're professing to be. It'll be somebody who didn't have on the right Sunday outfit. Somebody whose breath betrays what they were into before coming to church. Every now and then somebody will come in. They don't know the songs we sing. They don't know the words to the prayers we pray. But they will challenge us to show forth the caring love of God. Every now and then, in some special way, Jesus will challenge the church to focus on his interests and accept his priorities and get involved in helping somebody to be made whole. The man with the withered hand came to the synagogue because it had been well publicized that Jesus would be there teaching. Knowing him to be mighty in word and deed, the man made his way to the synagogue. He may have well been there before, but he knows by now it's not good to be around church folk when Jesus isn't there. They'll talk about you bad, call you all kind of names under their breath, They look at you funny if you're not part of their crowd. This man was not like others who came to church. He had a disability. He was to them unattractive, a beggar, someone undesirable. The hospitality committee didn't shove a welcome card in his hand when he came up the steps. No usher smiled in his face and showed him where to sit when they said, whosoever will, let him come. They didn't mean his kind, but he came. Somebody say anyhow, because Jesus was there. And any time you have the spiritual discernment that the Lord is going to be involved in what's going on, Anytime it is well publicized that there's going to be a meeting of the faithful and you determine that the activity is one that appears to be blessed of God and ordered for the glory of his name, if you expect Jesus to respond there to the call of the faithful to come, you get there. Because if Jesus is going to be there, you can come. It doesn't matter how the invitation reads. If Jesus is going to be blessing, you can come. That's why that strange woman crashed the party at Simon's house. 
She wasn't invited. She wasn't favored by the host or his guests. But Jesus yeah. welcomed her there. Yeah. And if Jesus is present, you can come. Yeah. And you can bring your withered conditions. I tell you, this man is a model of what it means to stretch out to Jesus. He tells us, first of all, if you have a condition that needs some attention, more attention than you can get from the professional care of others you brought in on your case. Yeah. This man shows us that you should not neglect your fellowship in the house of the Lord. Yeah. The church is not perfect, but we are here doing the best we can. Yeah. And its price is precisely because we are not perfect yeah. that Jesus shows up. Now you go ahead and search the city, high and low. And if you find a church you believe to be perfect, then please let it be. Don't you join it, because chances are you're going to mess up its record. The church is not perfect, but that's why Jesus shows up. Don't let your condition, don't let your circumstances keep you from coming to any house that is a true house of prayer. Don't worry about what others say. Some of us are still trying to get our conversation in line with our heartfelt convictions. Don't pay no attention to them. It's not their house. It's our Father's house. I tell you, you will find bread here to satisfy your inner hunger. There's water here to refresh your thirsty spirit. Sometimes the light of heaven will turn on here like somebody flipped a switch and all of a sudden you can see your way clear. There will be singing here because God gives a song to those he redeems. There'll be some praying here, some testimonies, not too many, but surely two or three gathered who have the can't help it, who will stand and declare the greatness of God and his mighty acts in their life. So when problems come and your condition goes from bad to worse beyond your ability to help yourself, you stretch out and come back to the fellowship of believers in Christ and let the ministry of the word refresh you and encourage you and lift you up. Some may have come in sagging and dragging, but don't you feel like standing up and praising him now? You let go and let God, and he may even give you a dance of praise. You stretch beyond your own house that may have become for you a tomb because of worries and sorrows and you get to the house of the Lord. It may be a stretch for you, but you have to keep a positive attitude. You see, no matter how bad your situation looks, it wasn't bad enough to keep you from getting up this morning. It didn't keep you from getting to church. So by definition, it's not as bad as it could be. You keep a positive attitude and believe your situation can be made better. It may be that you are making your condition worse by plaguing yourself with too much negativity. Your own thoughts can be toxic, making your situation worse. Worrying about what you don't know. Worrying about what you can't do anything about. Haven't you heard it said, if you're going to pray, don't worry. And if you're going to worry, don't pray. Haven't you heard it said, you and the Lord don't need to be up all night. He that keeps Israel neither slumbers nor sleep. 
Let God stay up and you get some sleep. Jesus is your hope in the courtroom that when justice sounds its gavel against you, he can redeem your record and give you another chance at living right with God. He's your hope on the sick bed that the doctor's word is not the last word. Do I have a witness? It may be a stretch for you, but like this man, you need to be willing to respond to your problems with some action. Do what you can do and trust God to do what he can do. He wants you to share in your victory. You see, we want God to be a push button God and give us quick fixes without much of any effort of our own. But Jesus wants us to share in our victory. So always be willing to do what you can when you petition God to do what he can. If you come to Jesus with faith to believe and you are poised to respond to the ministry of Christ with positive action, you may find, you may find that he has already been working to make things all right. He's been working in your past to redeem the time. So you are not plagued by what's behind you. He's working in your present in ways you may not fully understand yet. And he's already working in tomorrow, getting things ready for your arrival. So stretch out and ask the master, Lord, whoo, what would you have me to do? The command from Jesus to the man with the withered hand was, stretch out your hand. You see, it took some doing on the man's part to find out that God through Jesus Christ had already done his part. The hand, you see, was withered, which means it was shriveled up. And he was not accustomed to stretching out that hand. He had it tucked away, out of reach. But to get his blessing, to get his healing, he had to do something else. He had to do something more. He had to stretch it out. Yeah. And when he decided that he would try doing what he was resigned to never being able to do, that's when he found out God had already put strength in that hand. God had already started the healing because if you ain't feeling me. Because if God hadn't already put healing in the hand, he wouldn't have been able to move it. Thank God when we stretch out, God knows what he's already been up to on our behalf. It may be a stretch for you, but be willing to try what Jesus says to do. It may be a stretch for you, but if you try, Jesus will take your effort and maximize it into a blessing. The man stretched out his hand and Jesus made it whole just like the other one. The problem with a lot of us is that we satisfy with one good hand. We satisfied with less than wholeness. Satisfied with what we have achieved in life. Satisfied that we've already developed as much as is reasonable and necessary. We think we about as good as anybody needs to be. And certainly not as bad as the neighbor next door. We satisfied with one hand. We got one Sunday. We sure to come to church and bring our dues. We satisfied with one hand. 
this is a stretch to come every Sunday and bring tithes and sacrificial offerings. We satisfy with one good hand. We're pretty well regarded by friends and family and not much concern about having more of the favor of God. We satisfy with one good hand. I tell you, it's going to take a stretch before you become whole and complete in Christ. It'll take a stretch before you give God's work, give to God's work without grudging or necessity, but give with thanksgiving and good cheer. But thank God, when any of us dares to expose our infirmities and let Christ deal with them, health and wholeness, peace of mind, and spiritual maturity, it will all come together in Jesus. When Jesus did what he did for that man, not everybody cheered, and not everybody will celebrate your wholeness. Everyone will not celebrate you coming into a consciousness of yourself because they've gotten used to you being the way you are. They can deal with you better like you have always been. They can manage you. They can manipulate you better when they are well aware of your weaknesses. So let's stretch out and find out what God can use us for. The crowd in the synagogue got mad and said, we got to get rid of this Jesus. That's why they hung him up to protect their power. They hung him up to protect their privilege. They hung him up so they could stay in the condition they were in, celebrating the law, but not the love of God. They hung him up to get rid of the necessity of stretching out. They hung him up on that cross, and instead of turning in on his own pain and sorrow, and don't you think that hanging on that cross was some picnic? He felt every stroke of the whip. He felt the spear in his side. The streams of blood flowing from his holy brow and his wounded side. He hurt up there. He grieved up there. But up there, on the cross, he still had enough love to reach out to a thief, repenting of his sinful ways, and promised him a place in paradise. They took Jesus down from the cross and put him in a tomb. But he rose from the dead in victory. That means if I stretch out, he's got the power to minister to my every need. So here I go. You can come if you like. But here I go. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know if you withdraw yourself from me. Whither shall I go? I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me when the earth all around me is sinking sand on Christ the solid rock I stand when I need a shelter when I need a friend I go to the rock oh lead me to the rock that is higher than I say yeah say yeah Say yeah to the rock. Say yes to your healing. 
say yes to your blessings. Stretch out and get what God has for you. Stretch out and he will save. He will deliver. He will make you whole. Yeah. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. for you? Did he fix you up? Did he dust you off? Did he make you whole? Did he save your soul? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Stretch out. Stretch out. That which is ailing you. Stretch out. That which is hindering you. And I am convinced on this day that if you stretch out your faith, God will stretch out his. Is there anybody in here today? There may be someone here today. You've heard the message and you heard the messenger imploring us, admonishing us, advising us that we must don't leave this place the way we came. We may have come here broken. We may have come here depressed and despondent. But Jesus can heal all that which ails you. He can mend the brokenhearted. He can, he can save the sin-sick soul. Is there one here today who said, I don't know how I'm just, I'm going to make it. I've been walking around this week, this month, withered. I've been walking around this week on a limp. But I know if I could just reach out, if I can just stretch out, that God will meet me at the point of my needs. Is there one today? Come on, come on. And perhaps there may be someone else. There may be someone else who said, yes, yes, I, 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 I tried it. I tried to reach out, but it seems like God is not reaching back for me. Well, I implore you today, just keep your hand reaching toward God's hand, and God will do that which we cannot do ourselves. Someone here today, someone here today, you're sitting in the pews. You're contemplating. I don't want no one to see my scars. I don't want no one to see my withered hand. I don't want no one to see that I am broken. Don't hide. Don't hide behind that which is alien. Don't hide behind that. God will give you the strength to move. And to come to him to be healed. Young brother, young brother, young brother. Yes, it's you I'm talking to. It's you I'm talking to. It's you I'm talking to right now, young brother. You find yourself. You were in a crossroad. You tried all that you can. I searched high, I searched low. I searched help in different people and different avenues. 
and those things have let me down. It was to the point that I became strong out on that which I was looking for in comfort. But that is not who you are. That's not who you are. God can. He's asking you today just to stretch out. And he will bring you in. You're here today. You're here today. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You're here today. You're here today. There's someone here. There's someone here. You said, you know, I, I, I've been in a backslidden state. I've been in a backslidden state. Shh, 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 shh. I've been in a backslidden state. And I need to know how do I get back into right relationship with him. Today is your day. All you have to do is stretch out and come to him. And God will restore you. He will reinvent you. And he will reconcile you back to himself. Come on. There may be someone here that, you know what? I, I, I've been searching for a place that I can call home. I've searched high. I've searched low. And, and I, I, I don't have a place that I can be comfortable with. I don't have a place where I can call home. Well, I got some news for you. New Hope would love to be your home. New Hope would love to be that one that will lead you to higher heights in Him. Will you come if you want to join? If you want to join, will you come? Come on, come on. And as we close, you still have time to stretch out. Don't leave this place withered. Don't leave this place the same way you came. God can heal that which afflicts you. And to God be the glory for all the things that he's doing in our lives. God bless you. said he gone y'all somebody give <laughs> somebody give God the glory somebody thank God for the Holy Ghost when pastor say go you go I'm like you sure he said I'm gone he done preached that word and did that mic drop he even got up out of here praise God new hope well before we go before we go just a quick announce two quick announcements for all those 
who receive. I'm the, I am, first off, your brother in Christ and your favorite cousin on your daddy's side. I am the director of evangelism here in New Hope. Let's give it up for evangelism. And our team, Deacon Hogan and Sister Andrea and Beverly and all the people who want to join. We're going to eat next week uh, at Golden Corral. The evangelism ministry is meeting at Golden Corral on hospitality. The 11th, that is a Thursday, the 11th from 12 to 1.30. If you would like to join us and see what we're about, please call me, 951. Is it free? Yeah. Salvation is free. 951, but that came with a high price. 951-707-7675 to get your seating so it can be free. If you hit me up on Wednesday, you know how we do. I can't help you. But call me and see your bulletin, okay? And also, we have service tomorrow for our brother Larry Lanehart and family and the loss of his mother. That's Friday. I'm sorry, but that is Friday. But yet and still, we still still pray for the family of brother Larry Lanehart. Also, if you received our evangelism outreach forms, these are going to be in your bulletins very soon. Lucy, Lucy, Lucy. Please forgive me. If the family's here, please forgive me. I read fast and talk faster. God bless me. If you receive the outreach form, please fold it. If you filled it out, put it in the offering bucket, and I will receive them personally. Uh, it is discreet, and it is private, and it is for your salvation, and it is for your growth in Christ. How we as a New Hope family can help you. Amen. So if you receive this, and you'll see it in the future, please fold it. Put it in the offering basket, and I will get it. Please stand and get your tithes and offerings ready. Lamas meet this coming Saturday. I got another shout out. Lamas, if you a man, there's only man and there's only woman. He made one and two. Please come to Lamas. We eat good. Bacon, eggs, biscuits, orange juice, coffee, maybe some donuts if Sister Lucky. Hello. Uh, we eat goods. The mans and the boys eat. If you have a son, a nephew, a cousin, bring them. I am the teacher of the boys' ages. Uh, if they can walk and talk on up to about 18. And we, get, we have a lot of fun. We play basketball. We joke and we do all kinds of things. But the men have a lot of Holy Ghost field lessons. Brother Thrash, one of our teachers. We have, we have fun. We have a good time. So layman's this Saturday, this coming Saturday, come to layman's 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. Bible study. Bible study. We need you. If you don't know the 23rd Psalms by heart, please come to Bible study. 12 in the afternoon, 6.30 at night. If you don't know 23rd Psalms by heart in the Lord's Prayer, you need to come to Bible study. Please, we have a good time. Please, uh, the, the deacons and our trustees, they will guide you in your tithes and offerings. And this is also the, the, the dismissal. God bless you. May God keep you. In Jesus' name, amen.
as the song says, may these tithes and offerings, Father, what we've given to you, may it be blessed, shaken down, pressed together, and runneth over. Thank you for your heart and your generosity in Jesus' name, for his kingdom's sake. Amen. Amen.